Another type of join is the filtering join. We'll be using the same data tables as in the last video. So subjects here and the experiment table. Filtering joins act like the filter function in that they remove rows from the data in one table based on the values in another table. The results of a filtering join will only contain rows from the left table, and they'll always have the same number or fewer rows than the left table. The first type of filtering join we'll talk about is the semi-join. So a semi-join returns all rows from the left table where there are matching values in the right table, and it just keeps the columns from the left table. So unlike an inner join, so unlike an inner join, a semi-join will never duplicate the rows in the left table if there's more than one matching row in the right table. So here we have two rows for ID4 and two rows for ID5, but with a semi-join we just have one row for IDs 4 and 5 because we don't have any information from the experiment table. We're just using the experiment table to tell us which rows to keep from the subject table. The other type of filtering join is called an anti-join. An anti-join returns all rows from the left table where there are not matching values in the right table. So it's basically the opposite of a semi-join. So this tells us that ID1 is the only ID that is not in the experiment table. Order matters in an anti-join. So if we put experiment first, we get all of the rows in the experiment table that are not in the subject table, so IDs 6 and 7. And it's the same with a semi-join. If we change the order of these, we get the experiment rows 2 through 5, the ones that are contained in the subject table. 